everyone. Uh, this is John Buck, back again with another Discrete Time Linear Systems video. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about uh, the Discrete Time Fourier series and how the eigenfunction property of exponential inputs we talked about last time leads us to this very powerful idea, the Discrete Time Fourier series, where we can uh, think about any nicely behaved periodic input function as a weighted sum of, of exponentials if I pick the right set of exponentials to build it out of. Uh, this is a, a huge idea that we'll get massive mileage out of for the rest of the semester. This is, is again, opening the, door, what, to, opening the door to one of the big ideas we'll talk about this term. So I'll explain how, why, motivate why we're interested in that, and then talk about the definition and, and one or two initial simple uh, properties of the Fourier series. Uh, then in the next video, I'll do, I'll do a follow-on video that shows an example of how I evaluate uh, some of these sums uh, and, and point you at that to see how we actually apply this to a simple uh, example. Okay. All right, so uh, switching over uh, to my whiteboard here, with our topic for today is the discrete, for this video, discrete time Fourier series. And the definition of that. And so where that comes from, remember we saw in the last video the eigenfunction property that says if my input to a system uh, is any, Z, any LTI system, this really amazing thing, if I have any LTI system, I put in any exponential, I get back that exact same exponential with some constant scaling or gain that it, that it depends on what the Z is, but it, but it is just a constant. This first piece doesn't depend on N. And where this gets interesting, we say, well, if this is LTI, I could talk about saying, well, well imagine I have, uh, if it's LTI, if I multiply the input by a constant, I multiply the output by the same constant, right? I know that follows from the scaling property. And in fact, if instead of just having one exponential, I had a bunch of different z's, so I'll maybe call them z sub k, each of which had its own scaling factor, then I'd get the same thing coming out, right? For each z of k, I'd have a scaled version. So if I had took a bunch of these inputs and then I added them up together, say, well, the superposition or additivity property says if I add the inputs, I would add the outputs. And so this says if I can figure out how to write my input as a weighted sum of different exponential signals, I take that, I can find my output is pretty simple because it's a weighted sum of these, thing, these, these things, but each one of them is still the same exponential where it's been weighted by the, the a sub k from the input and then it's been scaled by the gain for that thing. So this is ultimately going to lead us in a, in a few classes down the road to the idea of a filter and why we can think about filters and frequencies so much easier than we can in time domain often. Uh, but but the, the key idea here is, well, how do, you know, this is a great idea if someone gives me this, but the, the question is, can we find, we need to, you know, the key idea is we need to find the, the right set or family of z sub k to make any x of n. So that's the big, you know, say if we, all right, that's great if we can do this, but I don't always get inputs that are exponentials, like the example in the previous video. What if I get just some random periodic signal? Well, this is the big idea. If, if x of n is periodic, period n, then we can use, we can, we can build it, or let me, we can, can build x of n using, like the z sub k's will be a complex exponential that's e to the j omega naught times k times n. So using complex exponentials, which we saw in the Euler's formula, right? This is a cosine plus an imaginary sine part. <clears throat> Where I, I need to define one more important thing. This omega naught is the uh, what we call the fundamental frequency. It's, it's 2 pi over the period. So I have to find the period of the signal first, is why we talked about that earlier this semester. But this is what we call the fundamental frequency.
And then the, the uh, other, so, so all these z sub k's are just uh, scaling the frequency up, right? So I have, I have different values of this, and, and so we, call, we say these, these different values, k omega naught, are called the harmonics of the fundamental frequency. And so we have the first, the kth harmonic, uh, but, you know, when k equals 2, I have the second harmonic. When k equals 3, I have the third harmonic, and so on. Uh, if you played a musical instrument or know something about that, the harmonics for, for a single held note, the harmonics are basically the overtones. They're very closely linked to the overtones. And that's why if I have two different musical instruments playing the same note, like a piano and a clarinet and a trumpet, maybe three different instruments, they all sound different to our ear, even though they're playing the same note. They have the same underlying period, but because they, they, they have different uh, harmonics, uh, different weightings on the harmonics, different a sub k's in this equation, they would be different. So let's see, let me let me go on to the next slide and, and talk about uh, the definition of the, the Fourier series. So that, or to spell it out. So we say the discrete time Fourier series here, what, what we, we just said. So we've built up from the eigenfunction property to the discrete time Fourier series. Sort of to, to repeat this because it's important to lay it out. That is, if x of n is a periodic signal, we're starting with periodic signals because they're easier to work with. With period n, we can write x of n as the sum as k goes from 0 to n minus 1 of a sub k e to the j k omega naught times n. So again, these are my harmonic frequencies, and these are the weights of those frequencies. And in fact, there's nothing magical. It'll turn out we don't have to go from 0 to n minus 1. We can actually do this sum over any, I'm going to use kind of a funny notation from the book here. I'm going to write it like that. So the, the limits of the sum we write as angle bracket n. And what this means is any consecutive period or any consecutive consecutive set of n values of k. Right, so I can sum from 0 to n minus 1. I could also sum from like minus n minus 1 from, from the negative up to zero, but we'll see at different times, they all ultimately get you the right answer, but some choices make the math easier to work out than others. And in fact, we'll often look for ways to use symmetry to help us. And so one way to think about this equation, if, if, you, if you sort of break it down, is to say, this is like a recipe for how to make x of n, where the different ingredients are the frequencies, right? So these k omega naught here, I get my pointer, Right? These different exponentials are like the ingredients, each of which is a different frequency. And this a sub k is how much of that ingredient I need to bring to the signal. So if a sub k is 0, it says you don't need any of that. If a sub k is big, it says put a lot of that, that term into, this equi in, into baking the signal. So we'll have, we'll have different values of that. <clears throat> and so if, if you know, I can think of, of, of what, what the remarkable thing this says is any periodic signal I can make with a set of n ingredients with, with, as long as I get the right weights here for the a sub k, a, uh, a very natural question to ask is, well, in real life, I often don't get the a sub k's. I often go measure x of n, right? I could go record a musical instrument playing a note and say, well, as long as it's holding the same note, it's periodic. How do I go the other way? How do I get from x of n to the recipe, right? So that's sort of like, how do I, I, I go eat some, if I'm thinking of the recipe analogy, how do I go eat some food in a restaurant and then just in my mind say, oh, that's like a, half a cup of cream and a quarter cup of tomato sauce and maybe a, a tablespoon of oregano and, and, or something like that. If you're in an Italian restaurant, it might be something like that. Not that I'm hungry and it's getting towards dinner time or anything. Um, but, but luckily, we have a mathematical version of that. You don't need to have a sophisticated uh, palate to do that mathematically. You just need to use almost the same sum, which says if, I, if you give me the signal, I can go add it up 
over one period with a very almost the same equation with two small changes which is I changed the sign in the exponential so I'm, I'm now saying if I want to find these coefficients the sort of how much of each ingredient I need I take the original the one period of the signal that should be the sum is at 0 to n minus 1 of the signal times e to the minus j omega naught and then I divide it by 1 over n All right so if I do that that division uh, and this is just sort of a bookkeeping thing that, to make sure everything works out. The main idea is to look at this and say, I can do this complex sum and find uh, the, the, how much of a sub k I need if you give me the signal. Uh, and, and again, this, this thing I can also use the, actually I don't need to stick to n from 0 to n minus 1. Again, I can use any set of n sequential values, con consecutive or sequential values of n, to, which is saying basically pick one period wherever you want to start the, the period and, and, and add up over one period to get this, and you'll get the same answer. So again, we'll see as we practice with this sometimes, some choices of periods are better than others. Okay, and, and I guess the, the one uh, one other important feature of this to mention that, that why we can, can make these sort of uh, changes in, in the limits of the sum is that it turns out, maybe let's just uh, start this on a new page, one of the very important properties is that the, what we call the Fourier series coefficients. Those are the a sub k's are periodic themselves. So even though if the signal is periodic, there are actually a lot of these pro properties of these we'll talk about. But if I shift that subscript by n, I get the same signal back again. So that's why it doesn't matter which period I pick, as the a sub k's just loop through over and over again. So that's sort of answering an important question, which is if x of n is periodic, how many terms do I need in my sum? Well, it turns out it's not an accident or an oversight, I use the same n. It's the answer that, that I need n values of a sub k. So the same way or, or, the, or the period of the signal tells me how many ingredients I need, thinking of the recipe, how many different exponentials I need in my sum to make it. And that reminds me of one important thing I forgot to mention on, on this page is that these equations do have frequent names we use for them. Uh, so let me put it over here. This is called the, the I'm going to abbreviate, discrete time Fourier series synthesis equation. And the second one is called the, the analysis equation. And right, because what's going on here is I'm taking the ingredients and I'm synthesizing the signal. In fact, that's kind of what a synthesizer, like the musical instrument, was originally built to do, is it was made to take a bunch of, of uh, sine waves, which are related to exponentials like this, and add them up to make a musical note. Uh, so that's not an accident that it was called a synthesizer, because it's built on some of the same math hidden inside the circuits. Whereas the discrete time Fourier series analysis equation says, if you give me x of n, you can or march through or, or grind through this equation here uh, and, and I'll find the recipe. So I'm analyzing the signal to find the coefficients, the Fourier series coefficients. All right, so this video has gone on long enough. I'm going to stop here, then put up, I'll do another video showing an example where, where we, we go through the synthesis equations. If I give you some A sub k's, how we can manipulate it using Euler's identity to find uh, the, the signal, the periodic signal x of n. Okay, so that's all for this time and I will uh, see you at the next video.